Essena O'Neill is a 23-year-old adult. I don't think it should really be so important that she happened to be a former amateur bikini model. I don't think that's what really matters in life. And I don't think that's what really matters in this discussion we're having right now. Essen O'Neill today is a 23-year-old adult with a blog about politics. And as it happens, she very vaguely associates herself with extreme left-wing politics. Very vaguely. She also associates herself with New Age spirituality, the um, very eclectic, occult reinterpretation of Christianity, and psychedelic drugs. The use of hallucinogenic drugs linked to that ersatz spirituality. And for her political contribution to 21st century discourse, she received glowing praise, completely mind-blowing, one-sided, positive propaganda praise in the influential, famous, internationally renowned mainstream newspaper called The Guardian. I cannot imagine this same praise being given to a 23-year-old man who'd written the same garbage that we find on S.N. O'Neill's blog. I cannot imagine the same lack of skepticism being applied to the fact that she raised $10,000 in donations to start this blog, and then you're looking at this blog, and you really have to wonder where the $10,000 went. I cannot imagine even a male athlete or a male swimsuit model, you know, like a guy who formerly earned his living wearing swimsuits on Instagram, being treated in the way that the Guardian newspaper is here treating S. N. O'Neill in her new role as, um, shall we say, political commentator? All in all, O'Neill had raised about $10,000 for her new content project. In an interview with the vlogger and pop culture critic Tiffany Ferguson, <laughs> this is also a great example where professional journalism consists of somebody watching a YouTube video and then typing up their thoughts about it. Standards for journalism have fallen, not least of all at the Guardian. Anyway, in this YouTube video that the journalist watched, an Essen O'Neill recently explained that she donated some of the money to charity and the rest she spent on rent. Good for her. Her new project, this is where the $10,000 went. This is where the $10,000 content creation project went. Her new project is a website, Authority Within. It's inspired by the long captions and sense of community she once found on Tumblr. A podcast is forthcoming. This is for a 23-year-old adult. Good for her. Good for her. The message goes beyond easy aphorisms, such as, be kind to your body, or treasure real friendships. Sorry, You're, I'm going to give you a few quotations from S.N. O'Neill's website, but like, this journalist must have been struggling to say something positive, something flattering about the completely incoherent garbage that's on S.N. O'Neill's web website. It's not well written, it's not well researched, it's not interesting, it's not even impressive for someone who's a former bikini model to string these words together. It's not. And we shouldn't dehumanize bikini models. You can be a bikini model and be intelligent. You can be a bikini model and be, you know, go to university and develop some kind of sophisticated view of politics. All right? I, I don't want anyone to make the excuse that we should lower our standards because she's female rather than male. I don't want anyone to lower their standards because she's a former bikini model. That should be irrelevant. If you spent a few years of your life posting bikini pictures to Instagram, you should still hold yourself to a standard of excellence. And the journalists at the Guardian newspaper should hold you to a standard of excellence also. And if you publish a book, the publishers should hold you to the same standard of excellence as anyone else. It shouldn't matter. It fundamentally shouldn't be so important, especially in the context of politics, that she used to be a bikini model, okay? So pardon me. I mean, I'm, I'm passionate about that. All of us did other things in our youth. I mean, so what? I had a background in the theater. In case you can't tell, I now make use of my my t minuscule education in acting every day coming here on YouTube and talking to you about politics, but it's not the most important thing about me. I took a couple of theater classes. 
Do I get more use out of the classes I took in theater or the classes I took in political philosophy? You tell me. This is YouTube, right? But this journalist, in trying to uncritically praise this blog, the compliment she manages to give is that her message, Essen O'Neill's message, goes beyond easy aphorisms such as be kind to your body or treasure real friendships. Yes, well, high praise indeed. After falling hard into her constructed selfhood, this is such woke verbiage, spending five years in the endless cycle of consumption, then wandering off into the digital wilderness for four years, it seems O'Neill has become a materialist. Period. Not the kind that accepts free clothes and jewelry, the kind that's reading Karl Marx. For the Guardian newspaper to say that you're reading Karl Marx is high praise, for more of a conservative newspaper it might be an insult. I defy you to find any evidence in the writing, in the written corpus of work from S. O'Neill. I defy you to find any evidence that she's reading Karl Marx, that she ever has read Karl Marx. Here's a little quotation for you, a little sample. And I've got to tell you something. There isn't all that much text on the whole website anyway. So we're quoting a significant percentage of what there is to be read there. Looking back at our history, is accumulating wealth a bit of a weird trip for the rich and repeatedly awful experiences for the poor? Are the vast majority of us working really long hours and barely keeping up? Does it need to be this way? Could we share and transfer some of our sums? Maybe some of this insane economic, quote, growth, close quote, could transfer to real societal stability. Feel like this sounds too obvious. Feel like most people I see in my area are not okay. Same for lots of other places right now. S. and O'Neill, thank you for your accomplishment. Why is it that you are being praised in the pages of the Guardian newspaper for this unbelievably awful writing you managed to string together. Why? It's because we still have a society that treats adult women like infants. It's because we have a society that looks at you at age 23 and pats you on the head and says, good for you, when your level of writing about politics would not even be good for a high school student. Okay, A 16-year-old male would not be praised for this. This would not get an A-plus as a high school level book report about politics. And this is being praised in the Guardian newspaper. Why? 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 Just because you are, or you used to be, a good looking female. It's sick. And guys, a large part of this is, you know, this crazy left wing, psychedelic, you know, hallucinogen driven so-called spirituality. Quote, the Essenes are my favorite society to study. The synchronistic Dead Sea Scroll story gives me the good trippy feels. D d do I even need to keep reading this? It, the, the Essenes and the Dead Sea Scrolls give her the good trippy feels. What was the editorial meeting at the Guardian newspaper like when they pitched this story? Uh, why? Why? Just stop treating adult women like infants. She's 23 years old. If this were to be reviewed in a serious political publication, she should be getting scorn. She should be getting critique. She should be being told to be held to a higher standard than this. But no. Quote, the dark, simple truth of our time. The dream of the rulers is the majority's nightmare. The lucky few noble chosen ones are living in material heaven while the rest of the world slaves away in personal gradients of hell. Surely it can't be that simple? Question mark, exclamation point. <laughs> yes, and the Guardian newspaper is praising you for having made the shift from doing advertising deals with clothing and jewelry brands to reading Marx, to being a materialist, to being this inspiring left-wing thinker who kicked off her website with a $10,000 budget and this was the best she could come up with. All right, so the, the praise continues here. This is going back to our journalist at The Guardian. Reading Authority Within, reading S. O'Neill's website, feels a little like falling into a leftist YouTube wormhole or a hazy conversation in the early hours of the morning. It's disorienting, stylized, and very far from brand safe. What I just read to you, would you call that stylized writing? if it were written by a 16-year-old or 18-year-old? What if your 18-year-old cousin 
presented this to you and said, what do, what do you think about it? Would you say back, oh yeah, this, this could be praised in the pages of the, the Guardian newspaper? Many have referred to this as class war or recently conflict theory. Wow, man, those undergraduate courses weren't wasted on you at all, Essena. I mean, this is supposed to be the profound reading of Karl Marx that we're praising in the pages of the Guardian newspaper? I mean, it doesn't even sound to me like she's read a Wikipedia article about Marxism or, or Karl Marx. And hey, what can we expect from the future if we sign up, if we start donating money to support Essena and her, her work as an author? Well, she's going to keep working on her novel. She's going to build a, a yurt. Um, she's going to continue her research into the Essenes and, and ancient cultures that jive with her... Uh, you know, self-guided, hallucinogen-driven, you know, psychedelic, hippie bullshit. One of the questions I've asked my professors directly, face-to-face, -face, was about the pursuit of excellence. Because I've seen the mandate for my department at the University of Victoria, and I've seen their job descriptions, and they all talk about excellence. They say, okay, you are committed to the pursuit of excellence in teaching this, in researching this, in doing this. The department is supposed to be pursuing excellence. And one of the questions I've asked my professors is, what does excellence mean to you? In what way is this department pursuing excellence in teaching the Chinese language, in teaching Chinese politics, in the research and teaching of history and politics of Asia? Because that's what the department does. And you know, when you look at these things, ultimately. Yeah, there are a lot of catty questions we can ask about double standard and why is it that the standards are lowered so much for women, particularly younger, good-looking women, and so on. And the deeper practical question we have to ask ourselves is, what is the pursuit of excellence? And how can we positively encourage one another in it? Because you know what? It's a very positive thing that even an imbecile like S. and O'Neill has gotten motivated to try to do something more positive for life, to try to study politics or economics or make some difference in the world by talking about these things. But obviously what she's utterly lacking is any sort of impetus to do better. And you know what? That journalist at The Guardian, she could have been one of those positive influences. She could have been someone who said, look, kid, here's the standard of excellence and here's why you, as a 23-year-old adult, are falling far short. Dun, 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 dun.